Good evening. Sean Connery. No. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid ranks with you. It's Corbin. It was Alfred Hitchcock. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more juicy <laughs> content. It's yeah. so juicy. Thank you on Patreon, follow us on Twitter, Catwing, Bell, Hogan, Gay Squad. Bang! Follow us on our personal YouTube channels. Links right down there for you. This yep. is uh, whiskey and coke. This is uh, the blood of my enemies. <laughs> what time of day is it? Oh. 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Clap somewhere. Uh, anyways, today, uh, little babies, we are doing a Marathi movie. A movie review of a Marathi film. Is it Marathi or Marathi? Probably both. Probably both. I think it depends on what time of the day it is and whether or not you've had your Jameson. <laughs> we are reviewing Court, which we've heard an awful lot about. And I remember us liking the trailer. Yes. Uh, and it also was Nawaz's. When we asked him his uh, yes. favorite Indian film, and he also loved that. I can't remember if it was Niraj or Ali or somebody, somebody else mentioned it. Somebody else also uh, mentioned it as well. This is our fourth. Yes, because we've seen Natsamrat, Sarat, and the Factory one that I can't pronounce. Yes, the first yes, time. yes, yes, yes. That's exactly right. This and is now, number four. This one. So it is a 2014 film directed by say his name. Uh, I'll cut this down. I'll turn this this way. Uh, Chitanya Tamhani. I hope that's the right pronunciation. Uh, and it is when an aging activist is arrested. The lives of the accused, the lawyers, and the judge intertwine to reveal bigotry that underscores the judicial system. That's a pretty fair yeah. assessment. Uh, and I know probably a lot of you actually probably haven't seen this. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this is, we only use far reviews really, except for new films. Except for a new release. Um, so go watch it, come back, uh, and then you will be spoiled like the little naughty boy you are. Yes. <laughs> Rick? Um, I really, really liked this movie. Yeah, it was one of those. It was really, really good. It is a film. Yep, by every definition. By every measure of what it means to be a film. Um, really, really excellent yeah. filmmaking. Just, I, I enjoyed everything. I part. feel like if you love cinema, yeah. you'll probably really enjoy this one. Yeah. Um, if you are just into films like War, you'll probably despise this film. Yeah. Uh, no, this, this, this is a film I know people who, uh, they like just like, action yeah. and box office sludge stuff kind mm -hmm. of stuff yeah and this would irritate them yeah uh for, and for us it's like ah yeah it's give me more <laughs> it's one of those it's it's a fly in the wall film yep. almost by every like at every moment like a, 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 yeah. yeah literally is, every moment it is crazy how much this was just viewing people's lives and almost to the point of the film. Yeah, and I actually I have a question. Do you you may know the answer. Mm. Do you think the choice and I freaking love it. It's like Lunchbox but even more so. Do you think the choice for the cinematography to be so static mm. in virtually every single frame? Do you think that was an artistic consideration or just a budgetary consideration? No, I think it was artistic. I do too. Well, it was because it wasn't just it wasn't one two, it was they stay, like, after a scene's done, they almost stay on every shot for a good couple seconds. I like one of my, one of uh, my favorite shots that was annoying, but in the best way. And then another shot that I thought was just lovely. Mm -hmm. The static shots. When they're eating at the restaurant mm -hmm. and you're at the other end of the table and there's the four of them and they're eating, I so badly mm -hmm. wanted to be up close to them and get some close-ups and see their faces. But it's the exact same feeling you have when you're sitting in a restaurant and you overhear a very loud table and you're just enjoying looking and watching and seeing the conversation that they're openly having in public and you kind of wish you could get closer. So it was annoying, but in a good way. Yeah. How about when the court finished for the day? <laughs> and they just... And they just let it all roll to they, the point of... They stayed on it. Closing the door and then letting you sit in the dark. They, yeah, they let you sit in the dark for, it felt like almost a minute. Yeah. And it was a long it was time. Great. Yeah, so, and 
There's been a lot of fly on the wall films in every industry. Hollywood's not unaccustomed to them by any stretch. They're usually considered for Oscar nominations. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's an it's it's an artsy mm -hmm. film technically. Correct. Um, which is like even though I, it wasn't my favorite film, like Manchester by the Sea. Uh, right. Was, uh, uh, fly on the wall film extremely sure uh and then also i think another film that either came out that year or call me by your name was a very that, yeah that very one much. had a more, a more of a relationship but it was also just a fly on the wall yeah this i think it was almost the point that it was a fly like 100 percent. life goes on yep. and there, there's multiple things i think they were trying to point out one obviously there was a lot of stuff with the court system yes, yes. that they were trying to point out which yep. coming from an american what they were doing in the courts was hard to grasp yep at certain points yeah because <laughs> it's like wait that really they, just hold happened. on we didn't they didn't have a warrant why are we why are we talking why like, do you even have a case yeah like if that's not even admissible anymore if he didn't have if he didn't have a warrant to get into the house and he went everything he found in the house is after inadmissible. is inadmissible right <laughs> <laughs> so just i had to i had to like take myself out of like, this is not in America, this is, right. this is in a different country, they have different laws, right. the judge is going by that country's laws like they're supposed to. Okay. But it was like, there was multiple things that happened. Yeah. And so that was one of the points. And then also, another point that was clearly made was, this is just life. Yeah. This is their work. And that's one of the, it's, it's not just an Indian court. That's one of the most impressive things that, about lawyers and all those people. Like, they can be going at each other yes. in the courtroom, right? Yes. And then right after, they'll probably go for lunch together. Right. Because they're colleagues. Exactly. But this is their job. Right. But they, they made that point even more so, especially with the Indian culture of each of these people. Like, even though this, this whole court from this gentleman was lasting a long, long time and years and years and years. Right. These, these people's lives goes on. The sure judge, does. the uh, the prosecuting attorney, the yeah. defending attorney. Yeah. Like it's this is, doesn't control their life. They're not talking about it afterwards. No. Nope. No. He's got summer break. Although I thought this was a really lovely, the way it was depicted. After that scene at the table when they leave the restaurant and they're walking down the street, the people who represent that minority religious group mm -hmm. that were offended that the prosecuting attorney, attorney was saying he offended them mm -hmm. assault the defense attorney mm -hmm. but we never see it yeah it just goes off frame and we hear it uh -huh. i i thought that would they don't bring it up again no know? they just it's just this happened it, that's what the whole film was yeah this this happened this is an unimportant thing but it's right. a film and i love that it was depicting the way, and, and I, I read a little bit about the film itself and what the director was wanting to do, the inception of it, because I wanted to know if this was a true story or not, and mm -hmm. I know that it's derived from true stories amalgamated mm -hmm. of what the director has seen yeah. uh, and been a fly on the wall, just sat in courtrooms and watched, which I would, I've, I've done. I've been a juror uh, in court cases. I've also been to court as a person who is involved in the case. And I love watching the legal process. Mm -hmm. What I loved about this was these were real attorneys that are the kind of day in, day out. They're not the big money making attorneys that you see in high profile cases like the O.J. Simpson trial yeah. or even the, the case depicted mm -hmm. in pink yeah. where everybody's really polished, really good. These were the kind of and that's what the director apparently wanted to depict mm -hmm. was when you watch average attorneys in small courts they're usually not really prepared that well they're not extraordinarily articulate about what they're talking about uh and it's kind of mundane and kind of boring mm -hmm. uh, like the other thing i found really and i assume this is the way it is in courts a differentiation between that and american courts in american courts what the stenographer does is <laughs> take down everybody's comments until there's an objection sustained and the judge then says, you'll erase that from the record. The only time the stenographer recorded something is after the discussion, the judge went, okay, so this is what you put in. Well, no, I think, unless you read something different, I think she was doing the whole thing. She was doing and it the whole time? she was taking notes for him. Okay, That's, I thought that was the way they Yeah, were. I don't know, you guys might know. Uh, I thought she was doing this stenographer and then, which was still weird, that like his notes would be like she would be 
basically yeah. taking notes for the court because yeah. that's not how it is here. The stenographer is literally just writing everything. Right. Just everything. She's not she's not there to take notes for the judge. Right. She's just taking everybody's comments. Yeah, it's a uh, record of what is said by everybody. Yeah. Um so that was that was interesting as well. Yeah, they, I thought the the director did a phenomenal job and in the, in the title of the film is yeah, pretty you know, self-explanatory. Pretty perfect. It's just showing you the day in the life of a, a lower court system. Yep. And like also they would go like first it was the, the attorney and then it was the the, the prosecutor. Yeah. Uh, her life on the bus, mm -hmm. just about the price of stuff. And yeah. The price of olive oil and and I was like, they're just they're just talking. They're just they're like, just, this is not important this to is, what we're right. Doing. This isn't carrying the story in any way. This is just showing us what it's like for people who are involved in court mm -hmm. and, and then and what life's like. And then the, at the end, the judge, she was going about his life, talking about everyday things. Yep. Like they're not. They're not consumed with any of these cases. Like, and after one case is done, they're on to the next yeah, one. Yeah, like, there's no drama. And I'm waiting. You're waiting to see at some point. Like, okay, here's the love interest. Guess not. Okay, so <laughs> here's the antagonist, and they're gonna have some climate. Guess not. Um, <laughs> oh, we're gonna get into the conspiracy behind a to suicide and why he did. Guess not. And we're okay now. We're gonna get into how the judicial system's unfair. And, nope. I guess not. <laughs> that was, uh, another great thing that these kind of films they don't they let you like okay right. What do you think? That, what do you think this film's about? Exactly. What Th you, that's now like it because it just ends. Yeah. Like it just like they don't go back to the person who you think this whole thing was about. Right. It just ends. It does, in my opinion, what a great documentary does. That also a great actor does. Mm -hmm. And that is, you don't judge the character. You don't judge the subject matter. You just observe it, and then you present it. And I really felt that this was a very good job of presenting what it is. And you probably can make some assessments of things. Like, for example, I've noticed in just watching news that comes out of India, as well as the films we've seen, mm -hmm. There's something that goes on in the legal system in India that you don't hear about here in the United States, and that's this thing called abetment to suicide. Yeah. And it, it is it is a apparently it happened. We've seen it in how many films now where it's depicted as a where somebody is found guilty in the context of abetment to suicide. Yeah, because that's not a thing. That's not a thing here. Like I can tell Rick to go kill himself. I can't be held liable for that. That's called that's free speech here. Exactly. That's, they tried they tried to do that with gaming saying that the violence in gaming causes the violence in people uh -huh. didn't work. They tried to do that with NWA and the censorship of, of hip hop artists and said that because of them, people are more vulgar because of them. That it yeah. just, it, it so doesn't that, hold that, up. That was one of those other things that I was just kind of was like, right, wrapping your head around. It doesn't matter if he, he even, it, regardless of if he did or did not say it, it I'm talking as an American. Uh, and coming from right from our legal mindset, I'm, I'm I'm not saying anything about we're not judging us. No, um, but coming from an American, it's like what this is, this is free speech, <laughs> and obviously we've gone through folk singer like Bob Dylan. He got arrested multiple times. Big so, time. uh, a bunch of he got arrested. Yeah. You can go into the world of comedy and you can yeah. see. Um, um, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, from right. the 1960s, he's in. They, they depict him all over the place in uh, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Uh, why can't I remember? No, that? Rick, it's not Al Capone. Uh, um, oh my goodness. He was the first... Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce. Mm. He was one of the first comedians to really get in trouble for being vulgar on stage. And shattered yeah. the glass... So, the at, glass at, at, and shattered censorship issues for comedians. At that point, we were going through that, that similar thing of uh censorship of free speech right obviously it's not real i mean obviously there's still some instances where people debate what is free speech and what is Correct. not still but like anything i could tell outside of like if i told the president to go kill himself right he's the president so they'll probably yeah that you can't do any literally any kind of a threat like you can say anything to the president and if you don't believe us you're not looking at twitter feeds enough yeah because there's like uh what's his name mm -hmm. mike Monahan or Callahan, the actor who goes off, he's a New Yorker, and just goes off telling Trump to get out. Oh, really? Oh, and he is F-bombing left and right, calling him a piece of this, and a yeah. you're sucking that. You can do that, but the moment you do anything that's remotely close to, I hope you kill yourself, or 
you're gonna die. The CIA is paying attention to that. But, but if that's not, if like in a song you, you say, because there's, right. there's songs, especially in the 90s, emo culture, it, like uh, the, the like a band him or, or all this kind of stuff that was all about like they talked about cutting themselves and, mm -hmm. and, and all that kind of stuff they can't be held liable for the people right. that actually did that unless there is stuff here with the bullying issue was really really huge where if it turns out that someone killed themselves because there had been a repeated non-stop assault on that person saying That's kill yourself kill yourself kill yourself week after week after yeah. week that does fall, but it's still not it's given still, that title. It's not given abetment to suicide. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. So those are one of the things, and there was a bunch of other questions, like the the the, um, the warrant thing, and mm -hmm. then uh, old laws. Like he cited the old law from colonial rule. That's just yeah. this random thing from like and the eighteen hundreds. The fact that there's books that are illegal and right. Yeah, those, yeah. Like it's a bunch of stuff. As an American, you have to even even though we've been in the Indian culture, it's still strange to hear sometimes. Right. Like because. You can read Mein Kampf if you want here. Yeah, like even Mein Kampf, it's not. It's it's technically here. It's free speech, right? You can you can say well, that's why we have racists that are openly racist here, right? Because right. it's technically it's, they're, they're right. They're okay. <laughs> they're, they're free to do that. Uh, that's why Salman Rushdie came over here when there was a threat on his life for so, yeah, writing what he wrote. I enjoyed that, and I think he was making. There was a couple points he was making. The the one about the life goes on and, and yeah. that kind of stuff with these. These people in the court system, and then also some of the gray areas in the in the Indian law, yeah, as well. That I think he was pro trying to make a point, and I thought he did a brilliant job because yeah. everybody, obviously, there was no one main actor uh, in this, right? But everybody, it was like. That's one of the great things about Fly on the Wall. Everybody felt like it was a real person. Well, I believed everybody. There was no, there was no person in this that I that I thought was not believable. Uh, no, I was I was in awe, frankly, at how how much no one felt the need to perform or do anything. Yeah, you know, it literally you was, know, especially on the long shots when he got arrested at the paper place whenever they oh, were yeah. working. Like there was this guy who, and I'm assuming he's a worker there, but he was folding the. The, yeah, uh, the paper. I was he mesmerized was by him. Yeah, I was mesmerized fast. by him. So I'm assuming he got Works like a there. real person. Yeah, had to work at his factory because I was like, there's no way an actor could just pick that up. Right, no way, right off the bat. No, that, that guy's guy been working there. there for years. Yep. Uh, and maybe it was a real judge uh, because just the sense of no need to rush anything, um, letting the letting the audience get bored. Yeah. Which is a very dangerous thing to do. It is. Uh, to let the audience get bored. Yeah. Uh, and I love that. So yeah, this is, I, I would, I would, the only caveat I would give to people is if, if you're not a lover of cinema, yeah. you, it, it, you probably shouldn't, but if you love cinema, yeah. this is high on the list of movies that you'd want to watch. Yeah. And I know, there's, like I said, a bunch of people that probably haven't seen it because it's a regional film and right. it's an art house regional film. Yes. <laughs> so that. <laughs> limited scope a lot kind of like Big the other time. like the other films that we've seen uh, uh amis or um stuff like that it's just i know a lot of people it's even even though i know it won a bunch of awards and it got a lot of acclaim which is wonderful which is great yeah that's wonderful uh i'm glad it did and it, it, it deserved it. it um but uh this was also a patreon a patreon every single month gets to choose one regional and one hindi film a month that we watch uh, i do a poll and all that kind of stuff, and this uh, one won, which was great. Yeah. So uh, if you'd like to do that, even at the dollar tier, uh, they can uh, they they can do that on Patreon. So let us know what you thought of this film down below. What is the next Marathi film? I know uh, it's been good stuff coming out of yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, what's your is your favorite still? I'm guessing the yeah, factory. The factory. But <laughs> uh, that's got that's gonna have a special place in my heart for a while. That one's probably more rewatchable. 100%. I have to be in the right mood to watch Court. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it depends. Yeah. I loved Surat. I thought Surat was a fantastic yeah. piece of cinema. Um, but yeah, I mean, they've all been strong. They've all been very strong. This is very similar to like... Um, Malayalam. Mal Malayalam. Yeah. Uh, they they all have been really well acted mm -hmm. and uh, good stories. So let us know. Uh, Fandry, I know, is one that a lot of people uh, yeah, for raved a long about. long time. Uh, and so if there's others that we should watch, let us know them down below and upload them so we can see them. And um, I was about to say, on to the next episode. <laughs>